Hey Aquarius, welcome to January 2020 and Happy New Year and Happy New Decade. <laughs> now, January is going to be really intense for all of us. For you, some of the pressure will ease up soon enough. Don't be afraid to try new things. Doing so will introduce you to new ideas of love and beauty. You may end up on a lovely adventure. See where it takes you. If you feel like someone's turned out the lights, don't panic. Embrace the experience and the answers rise up from unexpected places. Resist the temptation to avoid your work and not get your work done. Now here in January, it's really intense. That's because your traditional ruler, Saturn, is coupled with Pluto and it goes exact on the 12th and we have the Cancer Lunar Eclipse on the 10th. So the most intense time will be the first two weeks of January. And then it will begin to ease off once planets start moving into Aquarius. Yay! And with all of these planets, in, it's kind of like weird that you, know, you have so many planets in the 12th house. It's where they are for you. We all have a 12th house. It is the part, it's, it's the area of endings. It's the area of unfinished business. And, you know, you've been working with this area. Oh my goodness, Pluto's been in there since 2008. Saturn has been in there since solstice uh, 2017. He will jump out in March, April, May, June this year for a bit. So you will be... Um, beginning to see the new life emerging for you. Doesn't mean that life can't emerge for you right here and now in January. It's just that in this part of our chart, we are finishing things up. We are completing things. It's the area of the subconscious mind. So in the opposite is the area of the unconscious mind, you know, which is the sixth house. So, <laughs> so that's what it means by, you know, deep within us and, and behind the scenes, you know, is, is there's parts of our brain that is not in our conscious awareness. It is, you know, where we dream and where it holds records of, of our past. And so we can do a lot of processing here and we can, you know, be afraid of things that may not even have anything to do with present time that can be about something from your past. So it's really important to be present and allow for what is being presented to you at this time to be something that you use for gaining insight into your life. Be the observer here not the judge because that's the challenge of this area is that this is where we beat ourselves up everyone I know I do when I have planets going through there I can just like you know really be hard on myself so be aware if, if you're doing that you know it, are you judging yourself are you doing the shoulda coulda woulda or looking back over your life and and with regret you know don't do that because all power is in the now and the choices we make right now we don't have any power back there it's done it's history the present is where the power is and the choices we're making today. So be aware of what is coming up for you and how you can use that information to make your life better today. Better choices, more self-love, more compassion for yourself, more understanding. Because, hey, when we know better, we do better. And yeah, I'd love to go back and redo certain things in my life with the conscious awareness that I have now. <laughs> However, I believe, you know, we always do the best we can with what we know at the time. And we want to move forward with this energy, not, you know, be in some past memory that we can't seem to shake. So if you find yourself doing that, that's how we can sabotage ourselves, is, is just holding on to things that we want to, be letting go of and 
and when I was preparing, I kept hearing the song, Carry On My Wayward Son, There'll Be Peace When You Get Done. And I, I think that's just a message here is that, you know, just keep going and you will get the answers and you will be uh, able to move forward and uh, live your best life and have what you want and these planets will move on <laughs> out of this area beginning with Mercury on the 16th. Now with this Cancer Lunar Eclipse in this uh, opposite sign in the area of your work houses, your work habits, your health, your health habits, this is something else that you want to be you know paying attention to is how are you feeling? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you getting enough rest? Are you eating well? exercising, all the things that we need to do so that we are feeling our best and feeling effective in our work. And so there's a big challenge here between, you know, your life work balance. And that's where, you know, part of you can just like throw up your hands and go, you know, what? I'm not doing any more work. I'm done. <laughs> and, you know, okay you know, is, is maybe you could just, you know, if to get the work done, whatever it is, you know, you could, you could schedule in fun time, you know, like, okay, when I finish, I'm going to go play, you know, set up time during the day for play time and, and play days during the week so that you always have something to look forward to. That's really important. And with the cancer uh, energy here, you know, it's, it really is about um, being aware of what you need right now. You know, what do I need right now? And don't be concerned if like you, you don't have the answers to, you know, what's happening right now, because there's so much going on with you on deep levels of your being that we don't always get the answers immediately. And that's where we want to be patient with the process and allow these planets to move forward and um, bring the opportunities that they have intended to bring towards us. So it is about looking at this life work balance for you. Now for some of you, are you wanting to move out of the work you're doing? Is there another job that you want? Now I'm just putting it out here, but I am having my YouTube Insiders course again in January. Uh, we had a great time last August and, you know, it's cool because it's easier to focus in the winter, I find, because it's snowing outside or it's cold outside. So it's easier for me to like stay indoors and get my work done. And so, you know, it, it will be a really good time to take a course. And, it, and for some of you, if you are interested in changing your work, you know, can you imagine how it would feel to quit your day job because your YouTube channel is generating a growing income for you? And this is not, you know, some pie in the sky. Millions of people make their living on YouTube. And I think it would be, you know, wonderful to give that, a, you know, a chance if you're ready for something new, if you're ready, you know, to get on a new path, try something new and uh, have, you know, value to contribute. It, you know, YouTube is always looking for great content. And if you like to teach, educate, entertain, or inspire others, there is a place for you here on YouTube. So just check out that link below for those of you that are open to it. And then the energy begins to uh, move forward because Mercury enters Aquarius on the 16th. Yay! And so you'll begin to feel more forward focus rather than in this past energy that you, you know you can't seem to swim out of <laughs> but it, it begins to like okay the pressure is easing up now i'm beginning to feel like myself again feel like i can make progress and then the sun enters aquarius on the 20th happy birthday this is so exciting i love when the sun goes into aquarius and so does the world. <laughs> so now we have Mercury and the Sun in Aquarius. So this is where you really begin to feel that breath of fresh air, 
blowing in to your life. Now, another thing you have working for you is Mars in Sagittarius. Mars entered Sagittarius on the third. And Sagittarius is a fire sign, and the fire feeds the air. So, you know, Sagittarius sextiles you, opportunity. And it is in the area of your hopes and wishes. It's in the area of your goals. It's in the area of sudden luck, sudden opportunity, companions, where you hang out, friends. So that is a really positive energy for you and working for you uh, very much this time. And that's good news. Now, the Aquarius new moon on the 24th, and this is your new moon, is, is wild because it's right at the beginning. It's at four degrees, 22 minutes of Aquarius. That's right at the beginning. And it's being challenged by Uranus, your avatar, your modern ruler. So Uranus is saying, you know, we need to make some changes. We need to get on a new path. We need to be open to letting go of what's no longer working. Now, we don't have to have all the answers in January. We're in a one month, and both of these moons, the Cancer Lunar Eclipse on the 10th and the Aquarius New Moon on the 24th, are saying we're at the beginning of something. We're at the beginning of this new path, this new life. It's more about getting on it and keep going, rather than, uh, you know, oh, I'm just gonna stay where I am because it's familiar. Now, with Saturn, it, you know, it's always good to keep the structure when things are working. If something's working, you definitely want to keep it. You want to keep it and move it forward. If it's not working, then it's time to let it go and release it. We don't want to be dragging into our future baggage that's not serving anymore. And it's, this is a cycle for you of completions in this Capricorn energy, especially the first three weeks of January, because it's in the area of the, the 12th house. So there's 12 houses. And so when Mercury and the Sun go into Aquarius, it's in the first house, which is the first is the beginning of something. The 12th is completions. It's very important to be finishing unfinished business, finishing your work, finishing projects, that need to be completed at this time. Not getting in your own way, not allowing others to get in your own way, not allowing, you know, you know, because with these, with these many planets in this area, there could be like secrets going on in a group of people. It could be a group that you work with. Uh, it could be family members. You know, there could be some interesting drama taking place here and that's where you want to, you know, step aside and focus on what you need and what you need right now. And, you know, perhaps following a different pattern of choices, uh, taking different actions and not doing the same old, you know, what's that saying? You know, doing the same thing, expect a different result. It will not work here. And, you know, there could be, it could be a bit confusing for you, you know, during that first few weeks. But that's where you want to just allow, do the meditations, do your quiet time. Allow for the answers to rise up from within you because they will. Your soul knows exactly what you need and what's right for you. We have to be tuning in and tuning out the noise of others or the noise of the world and be focused within so that we can take advantage of it. And I really do like your new moon because it's a new beginning. It is all about um, having new insight and freeing ourselves from the past, freeing ourselves from self-imposed limitations, self-imposed habit patterns. Uranus always rewards us when we reach out for new experiences. And that's where you get rewarded is by reaching out to new ideas and new experiences around the area of love and beauty and adventure for you. If something feels like an adventure, it's about you going on it because Mars is supporting that. And so is your new moon. 
your new moon is saying, you know, burn the past, let go of what's not working for you anymore. And it's better if we do it <laughs> than Uranus, because when Uranus does it, he's these aren't maybe planets, like maybe I'll make a change. Saturn, Uranus, and Pluto are like, you either make the change or I'm making it for you. And so, <laughs> you know, be open to what you need to change about yourself, what you need to change about your self-image, uh, you know, being open to new experiences, new beginnings, and even a new outlook on life. And then that way we're mitigating, you know, the, the unpredictable, disruptive energy of Uranus here in January. But it's exciting. It's fun. It's interesting. It just can be, surprise, <laughs> I'm showing you something that you didn't necessarily think about. Now, Venus entered Pisces on the 13th, and that's very good for your prosperity and your abundance. And even the um, Cancer Lunar Eclipse Neptune is trying in that and sextile the sun and all the planets in Capricorn. So money can be flowing for you really well this month. So you can be very prosperous this month. Now, another fun fact I thought I'd throw in here is the Chinese Lunar New Year starts on January 25th. And this is the year of the rat. Now, so many of you know your Chinese uh, animal and what it means for you, which is really cool. If you don't, all you have to do is Google it. It's based on the year you're born, and it's kind of interesting to follow and uh, participate in. So check that out. Now, for those of you available for love, you know, I'm not really seeing like, whoa, you know, it's love time. However, you do have Mars in that area of companionship. So there is that opportunity for, you know, a new companion that could be um, fun for you and maybe go on an adventure with you, right? So it is about being open to new ideas and why not? Just, you know, kind of hang loose and see where it goes. This is not the time for you to make any like major uh, commitments because you're changing so much right now that um, you want to be fluid with where things are going. You want to go with the flow and be open to the relationships that are in your life or coming into your life to see what they are revealing to you. And have fun too. We want to have fun. Even if we've got all this Saturn Pluto energy going on, we can still have fun. How is the career going? I do see you very much focused on work or needing to be focused on work but kind of like maybe feeling like, eh, <laughs> I really don't want to, you know, be buried in my work right now. I got so much going on inside of me and so many other things I want to be doing. But it is important to, you know, uh, work with your inner child and get the work done <laughs> so that you are creating that life work balance and new opportunities for yourself. Because that could be it too. Maybe, you know, for some of you, you're moving into a new job or your office is moving. There's some sort of opening here in this area of work for you that you want to um, allow for and say, sure, I'm open to any adventure. <laughs> Let's go. And the money looks great this month. I see a lot of support here for you in your money houses. So the money is flowing. The money is here for you. And that's great because that's like one less thing you need, even need to consider because there's just so much happening with you and you're at the start of something new, you're at the start of your new solar year and so you want to keep the focus on you and let that money flow. Yay! Health, how is your health? This is another area that you want to be making sure to be practicing extreme self-care and taking extra good care of you. Very important. Spiritually, who you know, it, it's huge for you at this time. It is all about you connecting to your soul self, your inner child, and what you need at this time, and being very present and 
creating that space so that you can meditate and listen and commune with higher power, source energy, and feel that connection to all there is, all, all of the universe. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, favoring, and sharing my videos. Aquarius, you're rocking awesome. Thank you for subscribing. You totally rock. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It helps to support the channel and it lets you know when I upload. So until next time, Aquarius, do what inspires you. Do what lifts you up. Do what opens you up to new ideas of love and beauty and let it take you on an adventure. Even if it's just in the consciousness, in our dream state, in our mind. Going on an adventure just opens things up for you.